Welcome to the channel, everybody. A fun one today for you guys plowing and um, having fun. You guys know how plowing is. One of my favorite things on the on the farm to do. It's one of the most time consuming, but it's the only time you really get to work these tractors for what they are worth. Um, this is no exception. Um, may seem like this overkill with 7060 on here. Um, but uh, I'm gonna bring you, basically I'll bring you right into a video that shows why I use such a big tractor. Um, 518s on there, a little bit different than 516s. But I'm gonna quit blabbing and bring you guys right into the action. Thanks for checking out the video. Like and subscribe if you like it. I had to drop a gear coming up the hill. See the, the crest right here. on my ground for you guys. Right here. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah. We stopped for a second. Oh. Oh. Play it on through it now, girl. <laughs> that was without touching the hydraulics. <laughs> Fun time. Well, I got going this morning um, about 7.30 and First of all, the stalks are still tough enough that they want to bunch up and um, every once in a while I just got to pull out, turn around. Well, not every once in a while, it's like three times in one pass. And, um, so I was fighting that, not, not getting a lot done. But when I pulled into the field, um, I was running about 1500 RPMs and gave it a little throttle. It bounced up like, I don't know, 1700 RPMs and all at once it popped up 2,000 RPMs on its own and uh, right there I'm thinking you know you've seen this before Tim you know what's wrong no point in even putting a plow on the ground why don't you just go change the damn fuel filter well instead I went and put the plow on the ground and I'm pulling and this field pulls harder so I have been in fourth low and I'm down in third and it has not been a power issue one bit with this tractor in third gear um, it's been a traction problem uh, which is crazy 20.8s um, fluid it's got a outer and I believe one inner on each wheel which them inners are 500 a piece the outers are 250 a piece and they're full of windshield washer fluid so it's kind of crazy to think I'm fighting for traction, but anyhow, um, I come and look, you can see the layer of crap. So this is the fourth year using this tractor. And, uh, I think this is the first wheel filter I've had to put on it. So I can't complain. And I noticed it before it was like really struggling for power. It wasn't very noticeable actually. Um, just knowing how it should pull so anyhow I'm curious if it'll pull it better and if it will pull in that field in fourth gear now we'll see bring it back out once I get this replaced and I'm gonna give it I don't know half an hour sun's out dry them stalks out and make it so they go through the plow as well well I fixed it that was simple <laughs> it uh I don't remember blowing that much coal before. <laughs> Wonder how long I've been um, running this thing with the fuel filter partially clogged. One of them things, you know, it's, it's just better to change the damn thing. Probably every year, but every other year at least. Three and a half years is too long. Evidently, obviously. So, uh, yeah, I got a feeling it's going to be a little different in the field. I might be able to pull it in fourth gear now through them hills and that clay. So, that'll be cool. All right, so this tractor is like a brand new tractor again. It's got all the power. Uh, pulling in fourth gear, this isn't as hard as up there, but I can definitely tell the difference. 
here is probably the hardest pulling section on the whole farm overall. And there's a couple of spots that get harder to pull, you know, but it's just one or two passes for 20 feet or something. Oh, well, this this whole section here is a ravine. You can't really see it that well. It goes down and back up, and that's the crest of the other hill. Right about there, it is tough. So, I'm going to set the camera up down there. I actually got somebody coming to record for me. Record coming up that hill, the struggle. And as you can see, it's shined up. Pretty much like a pier, and uh, pretty much perfect as far as moisture. As you can see it's falling apart really nice, and it's hard pulling. It's amazing what it adds two inches to each bottom does. Five sixteenths pulls like a not like nothing back there compared to this thing. So I'm gonna quit blabbing. Get you set up up there. I wish my camera crew was still here because it just keeps getting harder and harder. I'm down into third gear now and uh, not really going fast enough, especially up there where I'm pretty much stopping now to clean the furrow out. So it's uh, creating more problems, of course, but it's kind of fun, fun ride. I'm going to set you up on my magnet thing here somewhere, let you guys ride out there. I want to see the view too, so hopefully I get a cool one.
this is one of the new fields that I just got this year. I got 50 extra acres. I think I mentioned that already. But um, this has been no-tilled for uh, 20 to 30 years. Um, I want you guys to notice how shallow I'm pulling this plow. Uh, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I can't pull it any deeper than that. This is like cement. Um, when you get into the arguments with the guys about their no-till and how much softer it is and when you're plowing oh plowing just compacts the soil yeah 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 that that's what i was told growing up too but i've been able to think out of the box and actually realize and another thing i want to point out here is i walked that far eh, not very far 30 feet or so um but i was looking um no worms i like to point out Oh, hey, there's one right there, half of one. Hey, hey, I lied. There's a half of one right there. Um, and then you just don't see the worm activity through the soil. And then I'd like to point out also that this is when I was plowing six inches, and you can see all that clay that I was bringing up. There's only, I don't know, three to four inches of topsoil here. Compared to my land, you know, no-till is supposed to save topsoil compared to the land that I took off was just like this when I started farming and now it's got six inches of topsoil um, there's parts where I was pulling up exclusively clay that now have a good two to three inches of topsoil on them so um, my experience with the way that I'm farming here and then uh, we'll get over the hill and I'll show you guys the ruts that uh, will not happen in my plowed organic land so here's my other issue and I guess this is just more of an issue with big farming. Um, if you look down through here, you see this rut. Uh, it doesn't look like much in the camera. So right, once you get to right here, um, if I drop the front end of the, this tractor in it, um, I'd be pretty close to being high centered. And you can actually see where they changed how they actually planted the field. The rows going that way instead of across because they couldn't drive their big combines across it. Um, so when my dad was farming this, Grandpa, there was a ravine all the way up through here. That that little section of ravine connected with that section of ravine. Uh, it has since just been farmed through because it's no-till and they get it in their heads that they are not going to have runoff. Um, obviously that's just not true. Um, so I'm, as you see, I am in the process of building another ravine here. And, uh, the ruts are big enough down there that I'm going to have to get some dirt and fill it in so that I could actually make it functional again. Um, but this is more of a rant about just the big farmers because you know these guys, they're great guys, the guys that rented it. But the fact of the matter was that they were farming 10,000 acres or so. You know, what do they care about this little patch? Just like this. They just, instead of fixing it, you know, you come and plant whatever, what direction you can plant the field, and there you go. Um, Fence lines are growing eight eight rows out from where my grandfather and dad farmed it, and it's all the way around. It's uh, there's three patches here in the 50 acres. I bet there's 10 acres or more that I can't farm and pay rent for. So, um, you know, imagine somebody that's doing that on 10,000 acres. You know, I mean, how many acres that add up to? you you know, you're paying rent on a thousand acres. You're not farming. It's just it's crazy to me. Um, but yeah, that's that's why I'm proud to be small and I'm proud to be making money doing it. I can actually take care of the land and um, have good fields and take pride in my work. So I'm going to keep on plowing this. It is, like I said, like cement. Uh, this is the 7060. Um, pump is at 192 horsepower is what it should have at the crank. So, you know, like 100, 165, 175 in that area at the tires. And, 16,000 pound tractor and uh, it's obviously not a power issue that I can't pull but it's a, a big traction issue with this 518s um, if I had the 516s on it would be no problem but um, there's so much corn fodder that I'm not even um, I'm, I'm just I'm slipping on the corn fodder you know I'm not even getting getting dug in to be able to uh, really raise the front end up much so I'm going to keep moving on here and 
see how it goes. I might end up going to put a rack of weights on the front, but we'll see how that goes. So what would be the next level beyond uh, plowing cement? I'd like to know. Because uh, I think I found it. <laughs> I have four inches deep, but uh, it's just fighting for traction. Next gear, we're losing the turbo. You know, we're so. This is where I'm at. 170 wheel horse, roughly. Oh yeah, there we go. We about stopped. Uh, it's interesting through here. Let's see if I can do this one hand. <laughs> All right. Look at me go. Look at me go. All right. Just about got this back field done. We got. Um, on the other side of this, there's about this same width that I got to plow a little bit longer though. So. We're moving on to the next one. All right, I should have more weights on the front of this tractor. Let's uh, show you how this is going. Try to do it one-handed as well. Down two gears. <laughs> I don't know if you can see the front end off the ground there, but that wasn't playing with the hydraulics. I just was shift down shift and letting her eat. Now we're back up into fifth. Anyway, fun times. Fun times. Part of me wants to go put weights on, but then the other part is having too much fun riding wheelies up the hill. I'll be perfectly honest. You know, putting weights on sounds like work. <laughs> Chicken manure will be here in about two days. Uh, this is where we are at on the spreader. Both templates are made. Uh, just need to be welded back in there and put back together at this point. Um, all new. This one had to get cut off. Um, new hammer kit. Uh, every every bushing, bearing, and roller. That could be replaced has been replaced and ready to go so at this point we're just welding it back together and putting it back together and it should be should last me quite a while yet in the future i'll get these sides replaced and be a nice spreader for me other than the 30 acres for plow day the strip here is all i've got to plow down to the tractor and it's not even the whole length of the field it just down the dip I already did the other section across the two wet ravine but anyhow oh man I packed that bearing it was last year and it seemed pretty good um, 
Yeah, anyway, here we are. <laughs> of course, it was so far down in the ground, I had to keep going, and as I went, it kept coming up out of the ground. So. Guess I gotta figure out what bearings go on that. Yeah, fun times. Yeah, just at some point the seal went bad on there. Leaked all my grease out. I didn't even pay attention. As you can see, I was keeping other stuff greased. <sighs> oh well. I'll, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. Obviously, I'm going to fix it, but whether I come with the other tractor and finish this and just pull this plow out of the way for now it's probably what I should do we'll see oh I wanted to record it go oh I thought he was coming to talk to me <laughs> Oh, he's just being a goober. What a goober. Not how I would have done that, but hey, gets the job done either way, right? Man, that thing sounds good. Pretty proud of that setup right there, ladies and gentlemen. Especially bought and paid for. First year I had it. That makes me even prouder of it. It's an owl right there. Kind of neat. Don't see them very often, especially not during the daytime like this. Let's see if I can get you zoomed in. Look at him looking at me. What in the hell do you want? Food owl. Don't see them very often. Um, so, in the process of waiting for a bearing for that plow yesterday and working on the spreader, which we got that done. I trimmed all these trees out all the way down this line. I think that's what that owl was mad at me. I'm hoping it trimmed his nest down, poor dude. But anyway, um, got this all trimmed out, and I guess my nephew is going to come and clean it up, which I am not going to argue about that one bit. I've got two more fields. This was the easiest of it all, so let's go get this plow back together and finish that up plowing this little section for my brother. Uh, hay field, I've spent hay for, gosh, seven years at least. But look at how nice this is plowing up. I mean, there's just something satisfying. So satisfying looking at how nice that's turning over. Got the auto steer engaged here. Just kind of enjoying the ride. Look at that trail of coal. It's pulling hard. And uh, I've got her set about six inches deep, so to make sure I'm turning over. Well, 95% uh, of it anyway. You can see there's not much. It'd go about an inch deeper and there'd be none, but uh, right here, as you can see, we're not turning up any clay. Turn it over real nice. And, um, yeah, my brother will be happy with this. So. But this thing is just running.
guys could see there, but <laughs> oh, there I got out of my curl. So satisfying. So for you guys that were here last year, um, you probably remember me talking about needing to change my landslide. Um, yeah, they've just progressively gotten worse this year because, of course, I didn't change my landslides this year. Oh well, I'm doing a good job, but as you can see, my my furrow is not the cleanest, so it's a little bumpy. If I was on a little tractor, I'd be, well, sections of it would not be doable. You just wouldn't be able to pull it through it. Um, I mean, it's not super bad yet, but you can see what's going on. It's the plow. Because the landslides are, uh, let me get my, let me get my auto steer engaged. Okay. There we go. Since the landslides are wore out, what's happening is the whole plow is sitting this way a little bit more. If you can see that rear coulter, I've got it adjusted all the way out, and it is like right in line with the shim. Um, and what happens is you're getting dirt that falls in to the furrow that that shin, if you can see it, is spitting back into the furrow. So I gotta, I gotta get those landslides fixed, and this plow will be, I mean, hard to beat. So it'll pull a little bit easier too. So I'm here at this tree. I gotta set the phone down. I generally try not to toot my own horn, but look at how nicely I set my land over there when I started. Look at this on the curve and everything. Man, you can't beat that. You can't say that I had cornstalk rows to follow either. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Seven mile an hour through a plowed field sucks. But, it's a price to pay to have a uh, dead furrow that you can't even tell is there. Special one to Jessica. Got this done the other day. All put back together. Everything that can be new is new up here. Pretty nice. Well, only the one the one gear we needed to get new, but there's no reason to get anything else new. But bearings, bushings, all that fun stuff. New deflector, brand new hammer kit on there. Um, so this right here, you can see is a weak point in the side and I just went back in the scrap pile at the machine shop there and I found this piece of metal that was just perfect length somehow. I trimmed a corner off of it and I welded it on there. So that will hold together <laughs> probably, probably longer than it's going to take me to fix it because hopefully next year, maybe the year after, we're going to be cutting the sides off and putting new sides on it. Um, this side right here is the worst. Um, but anyway, that'll hold together for me. Um, here in the front, oh, there's a thing in the way. I got a plate in the way here. So this was added, this top piece was added before and very structurally sound. So we just added that plate in the bottom. In the back, that got the whole plate. Brand new back there. Manufactured, I need to trim that little thing off there. Completely forgot about while I was at the machine shop. And I need to put a grease dirt there. Other than that, there's new bushing in that one. Um, they had some stuff made and there was no uh, thing back here. There wasn't even a bushing, it was just metal on metal with a a collar welded to the back of that shaft that come off of the auger and then they had a bolt through it to stop it from pulling forward it worked but we made it right uh, but yeah that's that's that it's it's uh almost like new again minus the sides but i think that'll be just fine um pretty happy with it last year we had to make that new shaft well bob did new shaft on there 
considering I only use it once a year, I clean it up really good and take a take a tip out of uh, Ed Goslin's playbook and put some diesel fuel in a a little garden sprayer and spray it all down. This thing will last me quite a while for what I use it for. And like I said, we get them sides in it and then it'll be good to go. My problem is now this year, I'm gonna pop a tire, right? That's gonna be my my issue. Um, I've actually, I'm gonna call the tire shop and have, have them order me two new ones. Uh, just, just I, I've just got a feeling. I've just got a feeling. And it's not like this is light when you got it loaded down, so. I don't know what it holds, something like eight ton or something like that, so. It's not light. Um, yep, I'll well, bring you up to tractor. We'll wrap this one up. I guess I want to mention, got the 7301 out. Put the duals on it. Um, you, you don't need the duals to pull that spreader, obviously. Um, however, I am spreading on top of plowed ground. And anybody that's drove over plowed ground knows what that's like. And then add that manure spreader back there. You know. I'm going to say 15,000 pounds. I mean, not all of it's on your tongue, but a lot of it is because them tires are back there. So anyway, you sink in pretty bad. And uh, with the duels, that stops it. Makes it a nicer ride is all. So Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said before, uh, like and subscribe if you did. It really helps out to get the videos out there. and helps my channel out. Um, all that's left on the farm is... This field here for plow day, which we got a little under a tenth of an inch of rain last night and got a little bit more coming overnight tonight. Um, plow day is supposed to be tomorrow. As of right now, I haven't called it off. Um, sun's supposed to be out first thing in the morning tomorrow, so we might have to wait a little bit. As long as we only get a tenth or so, there's, there's no reason it won't go. Um, I mean, right now, you can go out and plow it right now, so... Keeping my fingers crossed, I'm not calling plow day off yet. That's what I'll be running right there. If you could see it, I got the 6080 with the three bottom turnover plow on it. And of course, when you turn it over, the mechanism hits the lift on that thing because it's designed funny and blah, blah, blah. So I won't be able to use it as a turnover plow, but people will be able to look at it and say it's cool at least, I guess. Uh, these are a friend of mine that brought a couple of plows down too that he wants to get shined up and going so um we're still in order somebody come and buy that john deere from me appreciate it come by that d17 right here too i'll be running that uh, believe it or not this 17 has no fluid in it and uh i was actually able to pull them four bottoms being a slat plow is why i'm sure the only reason um it wasn't ideal i can tell you that but it did pull it so I uh, expect to see that a little bit too on plow day um, either way if I do it tomorrow or not I'll still have some sort of get together as soon as it gets fit because it's it's getting to the point that I can't really schedule anything if we don't get it plowed tomorrow I'm just gonna have to just gonna have to plow it when I can and see who can make it so like I said thank you everybody for watching I hope you enjoyed it and I uh, hope to catch you on the next one